All right, number 11 on 439 deals with something called the rational root theorem. You will have to know how the rational root theorem works and uh, what it tells you. What it tells you are the possible rational roots. Remember, we ran into a little issue the other day when we were talking about this. It doesn't give you the exact roots, but these are the possibilities of where this graph might hit the x-axis. But it only tells you the rational ones. So if one of the roots is like the square root of 3, this wouldn't tell you that because it's not a rational number. Or if one of the roots is imaginary, this theorem won't tell you. It only gives you the possible rational ones. So what we do first is we identify who helps us with P and who helps us with Q. The constant on the end tells us P and the coefficient in the front tells us Q. So what you need to do is make a listing of all the potential factors of P. The factors of 39 are positive or negative 1. Positive or negative, give me a number that goes into 39. 3. And what's its pair? 13 and 39. 39 is kind of a weird number. I think it's just 3 and 13 and 1 in itself. All right, so those are the potential candidates for P. Q is 1 and 3. Well, for the first time, I'm doing this problem this way, where I'm listing the P's and then listing the Q's underneath. I thought maybe that would help. So we see the list of potential roots by doing P over Q. Well, if I did P over Q and it was the P's paired up with 1, well, what would that look like? 1 over 1. 3 over 1, 13 over 1, and 39 over 1. It's just a listing of all the potential P's. 1, 3, 13, and 39. They're automatically in the group, in the running. The other ones will come from all the P's over who? 3. So that completes the list. We need to do uh, 1 third. Three thirds or no? Do we need to worry about three thirds? It's already here. It's one. It's 13 thirds listed. No, so we better add it to the list. What about 39 thirds? It's 13. So we need to add to our list plus or minus one third and plus or minus 13 thirds. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six times two is 12 potential candidates for the rational roots. In the days before graphing calculators, you would then take each of those 12 numbers and perform synthetic division with them. You would try synthetic division with 1 and the coefficients. If it gives you a remainder of 0, 1 is a root. Then you would try negative 1 with all the coefficients. If it gave you a remainder of 0, one is, negative 1 would be the root. And you'd go down the line and you would try all 12 of them until you find the rational roots. All right? But luckily, we are now a little advanced technologically, and we could see that one of the roots appears to be definitely what? Three. Does it, if you graph this on your calculator, I'm not going to waste time on the video, but if you graph it on the calculator, you should see that three appears to be a good root. If you think it is, Use it for your synthetic division. If 3 appears to be a good root, take 3 and divide it into these coefficients. 3 from the x to the 4th, negative 20 from x cubed, 68, come on, 68 from x squared, negative 92 from x, and negative 39 on the end. If 3 is a good root, we're going to get a, ration, uh, uh, a remainder of 0. So we're all set up and ready to launch. Let's run through this. If you don't know synthetic division, here's your last chance before the test. Well, you can go and watch some videos on it. Plenty on there. Bring the 3 down. Multiply. 9. Add. Multiply. 68 minus 33. 
35. Multiply. Triple 35. 105 minus 92. 13. Nice. 3 times 13 is 39. Remainder of 0. Okay? So here's what that means. In the world of x minus r1, we now know 3 is r1. So one of the factors is x minus 3. The other is 3, oh boy, this column started as x to the what? Fourth. But when you do synthetic division, it's now 3x cubed minus 11x squared plus 35x plus 13. And now what? Is this where you got stuck? Okay, here we go. Were there other potential rational roots other than just 3? Because one of the good ones was positive 3, right? Positive 3 was one rational root. Were there other options available? Lots. When you look at the graph, do any of them look close? I mean, if you look at the graph, is 39 one of the crossings? I doubt it. They're never really that large. Usually they're somewhere in the middle of the graph. Which one looked like a good candidate? Negative one-third. Okay, let's just do a little different color here. We think negative, we think negative one-third, we think that's a potential candidate. If it is, use synthetic division on it. Take negative one-third. Guess what? Now do synthetic division on the new factor. If negative one-third is a factor or is a root, it's going to be one of the zeros of this piece. So do negative one-third with 3, negative 11, 35, and 13. Not the original problem, but the new factored part. All right? You're breaking that down further. Let's see if it works. Bring the 3 down. Multiply. Go on. One third times three is one, negative one. Add, negative 12. A third of 12, negative negative is positive four. Add, 39 times negative one third is negative 13. Yay, zero. So that means, all right, from the red part, we knew that x minus three was a candidate, was a good root. From the blue synthetic division, we now know that x minus minus one third x plus one-third is good. And now we have this green part, which was x cubed and is now x squared minus 12x plus 39. Now you're to a quadratic, which you can either factor or use the world-famous quadratic form. Quadratic form. All right? You can use the quadratic formula on that part. And what you're going to find is this is going to give you 2 complex roots. So you'll find 3, negative 1 third, and I think they are 2 plus 3i and 2 minus 3i. 